What's going on everyone and thank you for joining me on The Art and the Artist. I'm your host, LA Phil. On this episode, I get to speak with the absolutely incredible Kennedy, a California girl born in Los Angeles, raised in Riverside. She graduated from UC Santa Barbara with a degree in Sociology and Environmental Studies. She went to UCLA originally to pursue her master's in education. Now taking a leave, she's entering a transitional phase in her life. Kennedy is a beacon of positivity and good energy. And if you follow her Instagram, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It was her art on Twitter that originally caught my eye, her collage work in particular. During the interview, I describe it as a controlled chaos. There's a lot going on, but everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. After getting a chance to talk to Kennedy, that's kind of also how I would describe her. She's got a lot going on, but she is exactly where she needs to be. Whether it's the painting, digital art, collages, a mixture of all three, Kennedy's work stands out. And in my opinion, she's got a bright future ahead of her. So without further ado, I present Kennedy. All right, well, thank you, Kennedy. Should I call you Kennedy? Is that all right? Yeah. What would you That's all right? Kennedy's good, yeah. Are you Phil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phil, it's Phil. Nice to meet you. That's all good. It was very nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Thank you so much for joining me today. I am a, a big fan of yours. And I think when I, I had messaged you on Twitter and I said, you're one of my favorite followers on Instagram. I, I encourage you, anyone watching this, if you're having a bad day, go follow Kennedy. It's it's absolutely great. Your energy is absolutely wonderful. Aww, that's so kind. That makes me so happy. I was so excited to do this interview. And honestly, that was the intention of my Instagram. When I'm sad, uh -huh. I like to go on there to have fun. Okay, well, so. that's good. Well, yeah, it, well, it brines up my day when I see it. So that's cool. And also, too, you know, I tried to message you on Instagram, and it said that you don't accept messages. And that's probably for the best, because when I was re, uh, just going through your socials, you know, just, you know, looking at your art and just seeing what you're all about, you know, there's some creepers in the comments. So that's that, like I said, that's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know what? It's funny. I always feel bad because when I post, like I have a hard time looking at the comments right away just because I get so nervous yeah. or anxious just with like feedback. Because uh -huh. when I post it solely like enjoying the moment like of I'm uh -huh. having fun. And it's mm -hmm. when people like start to comment and stuff, I start worrying. So it takes me oh, a while yeah. to look through all the comments, but oh, I yeah. definitely some like weird ones sometimes <laughs> yeah no absolutely all right so uh so you're in los angeles that's right mm -hmm. are you from la or did you move out here like for school or for art um i was born out here i lived in la for like probably until i was six and then i moved um to riverside and i was raised mostly in riverside okay up until high school okay how did you like how did you like Riverside? Because I, I used to date a girl that went to UCR, and there's not much going on in, <laughs> in Riverside. Man, exactly. There's not much going on. I feel like I was very bored. Not yeah. bored. Like, I found ways to entertain myself because there wasn't a lot going on in Riverside. Uh -huh. um, but I think now I've learned to, like, appreci appreciate it a bit more. It's very grounding in a way because mm -hmm. there's not a lot going on. So being in the city now is different than being in oh, Riverside. Yeah. It's kind of um, overwhelming for me at times, but it's always so like stimulating when I go outside, always something interesting that catches my eye. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, you know, when I was 13, my family, I lived in Chino Hills for a year. And mm. coming from LA, growing up there, I was bored out of my mind I like I, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't take it we used to go to uh what is it called uh Toys R Us and play the <gasps> video games <laughs> or go to there used to, be a, there used to be a Wonder Bread factory there and they would give out like uh like the stuff they didn't sell they would give it away for free and that was like the excitement. food oh yeah uh-huh Oh, like yeah, real was... life food i oh, would yeah. go crazy i would go nuts <laughs> see and that like simple stuff like that makes like my life just because yeah. that was big that was a big deal like in riverside right oh, yeah. IE, so i <laughs> yeah yeah that's super fun super that's cool. awesome so what but did you, you like oh go ahead i'm sorry go ahead no i was gonna say did you like chino you said it was cool chino hills was cool um 
like I said, it was a little quiet. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm from the city, you know, it's just noise, noise, noise everywhere. But, yeah. um, but, but you're right. There was something, you know, there's something good about that quiet too. Cause you know, the older I get, the more I realize, okay, sometimes you just, you need a break from all the noise. You know what I mean? It's so yeah. it was, it was now that I look back on it, it, it was good. I think it was good for me, but at that time, yeah, I'm 13, 14. That's, you know, it just wasn't, <laughs> that's like, not where I was do something. And the craziest, I still went to school like in LA. So it was like an hour and a half drive. Like, oh, it was, oh, wow. I don't know what my dad was thinking. It was, it was 13? wild. 13? Uh, no, I was a freshman in high school. So I was 14. Yeah. Uh -huh. Man, that's a commute. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. So you had to wake up really early, huh? Every day. Every oh, day. Man. It was wild. <laughs> okay. So what brought you uh, back to LA? Did your family move back or you just, you decided, okay, no. I, I need to change? Um, so I was in Riverside. I graduated and I went to university in Santa Barbara. Okay. And then once I graduated from UCSB, I went to UCLA. And oh, so I'm here now for school. Um, and I'm here. Right. <laughs> just enjoying the city it's right. it, very interesting though I think being out here has reminded me of just like a lot of memories that I've forgotten about because I did mm -hmm. I was born here and I did live out here like in my very early stages of life but I have a yeah. hard time like recollecting a lot of my earlier childhood memories so like yeah. just being in the city and talking to my family like I have little moments where I'm like oh my goodness like this is so nostalgic yeah. for me or this is so yeah, so that's yeah. super exciting Oh, that's great. So you still have family that lives down there then? You're not just out there on your own? Um, yeah. On my mom's side, I have quite a bit of quite a bit um, okay. of family. Most of them also live out here. The, the memories that come back, though, a lot of my family have moved um, inland toward the, okay. IE, I, toward the IE now. But mm -hmm. growing up, like when I would come visit, we would always come to LA or when we would mm -hmm. have like family events. It would be in LA. Like so... Um just that feeling of like coming back I'd always be like a visitor but to like yeah. be here now is super cool oh okay that's good all right so how how's UCLA going are, are you did you originally were you studying like art or like a like an art background or were you no. studying something else no it was, it's very interesting um so at UCSB I got my degree in sociology and environmental studies wow. and okay. I, I love nature and I love just talking to people and understanding like trends and how we think and patterns. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> and <Yeah>. so <laughs> I'm like, okay, I want to do like some type of nonprofit social justice work, X, Y, Z. At this point, I wasn't really doing art because I had been just doing school mm -hmm. um, consistently my whole life. And so I took a class and the class like it was an eco. It was, it was a class called eco psychology, and I just loved it. It basically um, just made me recognize how a lot of human nature is connected to like environmental nature in general, and the way we think and the way we treat ourselves. Um, like there's patterns that we see in nature as well, and, and it basically like just made me recollect like we don't do enough identity work in school, and so I thought why don't I go and become a teacher and like help children early on, like develop confidence and like sort through just elements of identity. And so I went to UCLA to pursue my master's in education. Wow. And I love working with kids. I, I love being around kids, but I, I noticed I'm more, of, I'm more interested in hearing their stories or hearing yeah. just their experiences and the actual learning and just like teaching curriculum. And so I decided to take a leave. So right now I'm taking a leave. Okay. So I'm out in the city. I do I do know I want to do some work with children potentially, but I do think that'll be in film oh, and like okay. some type of storytelling. So yeah. oh, I'm great. kind of in like a transitioning phase. It's a little all over the place. But yeah. as of right now, I'm in LA. I want to do some type of work with children's um, media. Okay. Oh, that's dope. That that is very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, because I mean, I've noticed just from like going through your socials, you're you are multi-dimensional. Like there's, you know, a lot going on. And, um, <laughs> yeah. No, which is good. It's a good thing, you know, because uh like it gives you personality, you know what I mean? And that's yeah. you know what? 
this by like getting ready for this interview was a little different than the other ones that I've done before. Um, just because usually it's like an artist that's got a bunch of stuff, like they got a website and things like that. But when I first saw, I, I forgot which piece I saw of yours first. And I, I started checking out and like, hopefully, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll get to interview. And I thought, wow, this is, there's so much more to you. Like that, that's why I wanted to talk to you, you know, and, and Aww. get the art fans and the people that follow you, you know, just a little bit of insight on yourself. So there's a, a video of you on your Instagram and you're playing mm -hmm. the guitar. And it's uh, like a split screen. There's three screens. Okay. Okay. And then, um, and I thought this was very interesting. So you said this, you said, this captures my essence. The lead singer who mm. really wants this to work, the shy introvert who can't stay in frame, and the one who is just doing stuff. All right. Now, are these different aspects of your personality? Or are, is there some, maybe some of that that you don't show outwardly or kind of a mix of the three or is there um a certain way you portray yourself when you're out in public as opposed to online mm, I love that question I think they're all elements of my personality that I'm working on trying to outwardly portray I think some shine out more than others like mm -hmm. in scenarios where I feel the most confident I think that's what it's easiest to share mm -hmm. so if it's something I'm comfortable like if I do dancing videos so like if it's a song I know super familiar with I don't mind posting it or it's a dance style that I know is pretty popular yeah and I feel comfortable I don't mind posting but if it's something that even if it feels very authentic to me something goofy yeah. I may shy away or be very like oh I don't know if yeah. I want to post this one but I've, uh -huh. I'm working towards just like regardless of how not regardless of how I feel if I don't want to post something I won't but just yeah. if it feels authentic to me and it's something I enjoy or it was something oh I, I didn't like that part but I feel like this is still like progress in this way yeah. I feel like I should still show that that's important yeah. because I think one of the biggest things my art has taught me is it's all about the process like mm -hmm. you can have a goal or you can have like a a version of something that you imagine for yourself but like it's just all about the ways you go about getting and how you use what's around you to get to that and so I think, um, yeah, I try to show it all like happy, happy and then even like sad sometimes. Like I try to share like I'm not yeah. feeling the best. And yeah. sometimes that gets me like support from my community and other times yeah. it just feels good to like release that energy. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I try to do a little bit of it all. It's hard yeah. though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you know what, that's, that's great too because I know I've, I've talked about this before in other interviews that people only portray what they want you to see. You know, it mm -hmm. might not be exactly how they're feeling, but I, I do get, you know, in a sense with you that this is you, like, you know, the good, the bad, whether, you know, like you said, <laughs> maybe you don't want to put this out, but you put it out anyways. And, that, and I think that's awesome. That's that's one of the, the great things about you. That's why I love following you. It's it's real, you know what I mean? Uh, it, and you said something though, that, that uh, brought me, that brings me to the question I had here was about a piece that you were writing, uh, writing, that you were uh, putting together. Hold on, where is it? Okay, and it says, which piece was this? It says, I'm always nervous to start painting because it never initially matches how I envision it. All right, so when you're in the creative process, I understand maybe you might have, okay, I want it to look like this. But once you get into it, it's, it's maybe not it, it doesn't go the way you thought it would go. Now, now, what is that process for you? Do you just kind of work through it until it gets to where you want to go? Or you just <laughs> let it, you know, just let it flow and wherever it ends up, you know, that's, you're happy with it. Honestly, it depends on the piece and like my state of mind. But usually like if I've been consistently, it's easier to like get through those blocks even when it's not coming out how I want when I've been consistently like drawing or producing things. Mm -hmm. because I kind of look at it as like motivation or like a vision board where I'm like well I just did this one yeah. like and and I remember that process I just went through yeah. but if it's been like a while and I'm not confident again because like my state of mind is highly dependent on like how confident I am so if it's been like a minute uh it's hard to like get into the momentum of like oh I see yeah um the process because it's very discouraging when like you put this energy into something yeah. 
and then it doesn't come out how you like but that's why I say it's all about the process because I think a lot of my favorite pieces come from the fact of like they were so unexpected they came from like very real moments and then I like thought of a way to like preserve it in a very unique way that I didn't know before so I think it's just a matter of just it teaches me how to be patient each time because it shows up differently each time sometimes Mm -hmm. like I'll get right into it I'm like oh I can just do this instead and other times like I won't touch it like there have been times where like I've thrown it away or like destroyed it one of my favorite pieces really (laughs) uh, yeah it's like a my self-portrait um I threw it away and like ripped up a bunch of my sketches I was really upset and then I was like dang why did I do that and then like (laughs) randomly (laughs) randomly as I was painting this thing I, I was like oh maybe I could use those little scraps and then I made it and was like oh wow like super cool so oh yeah 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 and hold on wait I I made a note of that hold on yeah because it it came out great uh, my writing is all over the place but yeah but I like that you you because even I I don't know if it was a tweet or an Instagram post you said you'd ripped it all up and then you put it back all together in some sort of collage to make a brand new piece that's awesome I I think it's the one it says I think it says, I think I may have a problem or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. But that's, so if you maybe get stuck on a piece then, is, is that, do you usually just, okay, maybe I'll wait it out or, or like, like you did that last time, just, I mean, just get rid of it and, I, and start something I, new. I think the fun part about art, sometimes I'll wait it out. And other times, like, I think next time, if I get stuck, um, I'll probably do something like collaborative. So I'll ask someone like, yeah. will you draw something on, like draw a line on here for me? That'll probably yeah. be my next thing to spice it up. But usually, honestly, truthfully, like I, I'll paint first. I'm not, I do like painting wise, I don't feel like I'm the best. And then once I feel like okay, I just cannot paint anymore, like I don't have the skill set, the, the capacity, that's when I'll like start collaging. And I'll literally like just sit and look around my room and be like, what paper can I use? Because I was an environmental mm-hmm. studies major. So it's kind of fun to like recycle and be sustainable in that mm-hmm. way. So it's kind mm-hmm. of like also like a challenge for me. So like, I'm like, what piece of paper can I use to recycle? I'll use like a cereal box. I don't care. Or yeah, like, yeah. Uh-huh. It, it's kind of like a game. Like, what can I get that can I, I can also use to preserve and make art. So it's, it's like a mm-hmm. puzzle. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's what I was looking for. <laughs> a That's puzzle. Awesome yeah so no, it's, yeah. it's different each time okay okay that's great no i'm a i am a sucker for collages too so i um mm-hmm. w- when they're put together you know the right way they, they can look absolutely beautiful and yeah and you've got some some great work and that's what i've learned recently yeah. which you just said um when they're put together i because sometimes like i would just do with them randomly and assort them however which is cool and all but i've noticed mm-hmm. like if I have a story or a narrative and the more like prepared I am, if I have one beforehand and then like, I just put pictures together based on the story I have in my mind. It's really cool how much organized and better my work has looked. Cause yeah. I wouldn't regard anything I've done professional as of previously versus mm-hmm. now I think I've just come to understand, like you can do a lot of storytelling with collaging. It doesn't have to always be so random. Oh yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, 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 no. (laughs) Interrupt, interrupt. I I am just here to ask questions. (laughs) Um, So would you say now, though, you're more confident in how you create and the way you go about it than you were before? Because you like exude confidence, right? When when I see you, and I don't know if, if that's, it's easier when it's just a camera and you, you know, and, and even for me, right? Like, I'm not a shy person, but I would say doing this show and talking to artists has one made me a better listener and just made me more comfortable mm-hmm. talking. I mean, to people that I don't know. So is that, is that you or is that what maybe I don't want to say forcing it, but, but this is how you want to portray yourself to the world. Mm-hmm. Cause like I said, it's, you seem very confident to me and to like every aspect of yourself. I think Thank you so much. You're so kind. I think um, I'm so grateful for social media. One of the strangest things, I'm very shy, I guess. Like if you were to meet me initially in person, I, I'm very quiet. I wouldn't say shy, just introverted. Yeah. And I do have uh-huh. a lot of social anxiety, but I think 
when I'm having a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, it's no problem because I genuinely love, yeah. I love having genuine conversations with people. But if I mm -hmm. feel like I'm going to be in a setting where it's small talk or we're not being genuine, yeah. then I panic because I'm like, I want to be genuine in every setting and I don't want to really place myself in a setting where I'm going to be judged for wanting to have genuine yeah. connections. So I yeah. think a lot of times I'm very fearful or I'm very, not fearful, but just hesitant about where, what circles I place myself in or like mm -hmm. what I do. But I think it's so easy on camera just because obviously I'm by myself in the comfort yeah. of, I, don't, I do a lot to like make myself comfortable, I guess. But I do yeah. that a lot in regards to like my life. I try to just set myself up so I enter mm -hmm. very comfortable. Because I know if I'm comfortable, then I'll have a better state of mind, mm -hmm. which is super important. Um, but I'm working on being more um, just like authentic to negative feelings as well. Because again, I'm yeah. very like outward when it's positive, happy. But when I'm feeling sad or insecure, I'd love to go about ways of sharing that without making myself feel like, why are you yeah. telling people this? Because yeah, I do have yeah. a habit of doing that. So uh -huh. I think part of me, yes, I do really love talking to people, but I have the control when, with when it comes to the social media or the camera of when I get yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no, that's great. It seems just like a little something. You, okay. Can you see this here? Oh yeah. Okay. And, and I, and I like the message you put yourself. It's okay to feel sad. Sometimes we need to let our emotions flow in order to let them go. No. And mm -hmm. I, and I think that's a great message. Now, now, do you do this like within your art? Is that a way to kind of express some of the emotions that you have inside or, or, or like you said, like putting yourself in comfortable situations that, that you can control? I mean, we can't always control everything, but it's, it's a good thing to put yourself in a position where, okay, I know where I am. I know these people around me. I mean, nothing's going to get too crazy. Or is there any way that just creating helps you get those emotions out the ones that maybe you want to keep inside but you know you shouldn't yeah 100 percent. i i i never like regarded art as an outlet to express my emotions up until recently so that's kind of what i would do yeah. and i think now i'm getting to the point where i've become more organized with like the storytelling but whereas before it was merely just i feel this way and i'm gonna like put but just however I'm feeling and then also just like with collaging collecting how I'm feeling and then putting it on there and then whatever yeah. it is is what it is and so definitely my art was, is a way of expressing myself 100 yeah. no, percent um, but also I think when it comes to like being in settings I recognize I can't have control over everything and that's mm -hmm. kind of the beauty in life that we have no control and that moments don't last, so you have to treasure them. And so I think one thing is like, I really like how we're able to carry art in, in like our style. So that's the clothes mm -hmm. you wear, because those are things you carry on your person. So even though I may be in an unfamiliar place, like having a piece of like jewelry that I really like, or like yeah. a shirt that I love makes me feel secure. So even yeah. just having like tangible things are very important to me as well to like make me just feel grounded, yeah. so. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. All right. So I saw that you journal and you've shared some pages of your journal, which I mean, mm -hmm. okay, I've got a couple questions. The first question is, mm -hmm. would you ever consider like, I'm not sure if you've got multiple journals or if you're just working on one in particular, but once you felt those pages up, submit that like as an art piece for people to look through so they can get even a better inside of you and how you're feeling. You know, I mean, I've always had like that thought, but then I'm like, why would anyone want to like read that? Like, here's my journal. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, I... if it's if someone <laughs> wanted to, I would definitely. I mean, probably not now, just because like there's a lot of stuff in there that's private. Like, oh, the sure. again, the control aspect of like, yeah, what yeah. I sh I get to pick what I want to show. But um, yeah, I think that would be so awesome. And mm. the way I'm journaling, I'm trying to like format it in a style that'll help me organize my thoughts as well mm -hmm. um so sometimes there'll be a page that I really like where I'm like this was good advice yeah. but this is like a good conversation I had in my head that I feel like other people could benefit from and I'll mm -hmm. share it for that reason yeah but yeah the journal pieces are also just kind of fun because there's no structure I try not mm -hmm. to structure it too much so it's like 
free flow, but then also like it's telling a story like as I look back. So I'm like, oh, look at my last one. Look at that yeah. one. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and then my second question. I saw that you were kind of formatting some of them in like a comic book sound yeah. and that maybe you were thinking about making a comic of your own. Have you uh, yeah. gone forward with those plans at all? Or, or I mean, what's going on with that? Okay. I think I'm very like not clear on the terminology. I want to mm -hmm. do, I'm not sure if right now what I'm doing is called like storyboarding or okay. comic strip style, but okay. I basically want to organize the visuals along with like the, the captions. And mm -hmm. I want to make, oh, there's so many animated series that I would love to make just I do. I love Insecure a lot. So if I could oh, make sure. like an animated series kind of the, like with the material being like kind of like Insecure but animated and just relatable, funny stuff. And also some children's fantasy stuff mm. that's animated. Um, but yeah, kind of like that. Okay. Trying to like just format it and play as I go. But um, a comic book, I think I would definitely be down to do um I'm I have like a lot of stories that I'm working on as well but none are like clearly formatted okay. yeah. I'm still in the stages yeah okay no that's mm -hmm. that's super cool yeah I know yeah because I saw those pages and I thought man this is this is awesome but, but I understand like some of the stuff is very personal I mean it is a journal but, but like you said someone could benefit from yeah. you working something out in your head and then you know putting it exactly. down on paper yeah okay yeah, and no, I I think that's great. No, yeah. there's different you know styles that you use for your art. You know, it's the painting, the collaging, and then I saw some digital art also. Um, mm -hmm. Is there one that you like more than the other, or is it just you know however you're feeling that day? That's how you decide to create. I think like collaging is like my baby. Like yeah. that, that to me feels like magic. But like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it feels yeah. like something I know just like I can do out my hands if you give me materials I can like make whatever um yeah. and then yeah. painting is something I wish I was better at <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I just like learn it's really fun to do like I think the practice of painting is so like therapeutic and yeah. I find it very relaxing and I love just seeing like the pigments and all but yeah the, the actual practice of doing so I just I'm not the best at I need to probably go to school and like enhance or you take a class or something, but okay. I don't know. It like collaging for me just comes so natural, and I would love yeah. for everything I do to come so natural in that yeah. way. And then what else? Digital man. Okay, <laughs> the thing with digital, I feel like there's so much opportunity and so much like freedom. And I love. I've always loved photography, so like there's so much mm -hmm. you could even do with that. And mm -hmm. then I love. I don't. There's just so much you can do with digital. It's just hard to do it for me right now just because yeah. I really only have my iPad I broke my laptop yeah. and I'm working with my iPad and so sometimes I just get like it, it's taken a long time like I'm right yeah. now I'm just using procreate and um I barely like know what I'm doing so mm -hmm. I'm very slow to learning new skills but I think collaging is always going to be my baby but I think digital just has so much opportunity and freedom yeah. that I'm going to learn to love it a lot so okay, okay. that's where I'm at yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, um, you know, I interviewed this collage artist, but that's not all he does, but there's this guy named Fib. You should definitely check mm -hmm. him out. He's, that's my favorite collage artist. He's, he's super dope. And the way he, he does it is, is great. And, um, uh, there's another guy that's named Teddy, one. Teddy Opong from, from the UK. He's got mm -hmm. some great collages too. And that's, you know, like I said, I see a collage and that like, uh, I don't know, there's something about it that, because, yeah, I mean, you, there's some really bad ones out there right or i've seen a lot of like uh like copycat ones but mm -hmm. i like the way that i the way that you do it that you know kind of like brought you to my attention is is a sort of how do i say it um controlled chaos i guess is the word that i'm looking mm. for and um <laughs> yeah, yeah i like that because <laughs> there's a lot going on but it it's supposed to be there you know what I mean like it, nothing was accidentally put in this position or this one there was you know a method to the way that it came together and yeah I think it's dope wow 
I love that description. <laughs> that made me like so excited, so inspired. That was beautiful. Yeah. Oh well, wow! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank that's, you. that's what I see. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. Yeah. Um, I think because honestly, that's how like I would describe myself. Just like a lot, but try, like I was telling you again mm-hmm. with this whole trying to control and just presentation and Mm -hmm. a lot of my thing a lot of my art has to do with like um I think a contrast between like what's Mm -hmm. expected and what you really want Mm -hmm. or just like beauty standards you're expected to uphold versus just Mm -hmm. who you authentically are yeah and so yeah that really resonated yeah yeah (laughs) well your art resonates with me (laughs) All right. So were you always an artistic person? Like as a child, were you, you know, one of those kids are always drawing or, you know, creating? Or was it something you picked up later? Do you know what I learned during my very short time in graduate school? Um, Okay, there's certain students we would describe as like rebellious, so to speak. And so I would never describe myself as rebellious. I would Mm -hmm. like the quite quite the opposite. I was always just super like obedient did whatever I was told, but I found that I was rebellious in like silent ways, whether it was just like not listening, like not not that I was like physically not paying attention. It may appear that I am, but I'm like doodling or in my yeah. own world or just mm-hmm. like even in the art I did, collage art, it was rebellious in a way because I would rip up when I would be upset. I would rip up like certain things, whether they were things that meant a lot to me that was powerful in the fact yeah. that like I destroyed something that I cared about or I ripped something up. I would rip up like a lot of magazines, just like models that didn't look like me. Like looking back now that I'm analyzing at the time, I didn't recognize, but just seeing how like a lot of my art comes from destruction and reconstruction of that. So yeah, yeah. I kind of lost my train of thought. What was? (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to get it back. Don't do this to me. Oh man! Sometimes I do. I do that very often. I'm not no, gonna lie. No, I, I lose right. my train of thought. So I was talking about were you <laughs> always creative, and then you oh. were talking. About, okay. Okay. So I think what started honestly, I got my phone taken away. I think sophomore year of high school. Mm-hmm. I had always like doodled when I was bored, um, and I was bored a lot. But I never like considered myself an artist. I got my phone taken away, and then I just didn't have anything to do. I didn't have a TV uh-huh. in my room. I had a bunch of magazines and then one day I was just home and was like, I'm going to cut up these magazines and then just cut them up. And then I cut them all up (laughs) and then just reorganized the pictures and was like, Oh, I can make a whole new picture. And then I had this poster frame of like the twilight saga. And then I glued all the pictures on the paper and then I put it in a frame and I was able to like frame my art for the first time. And that was the first piece I did. And I didn't consider it a piece at the time. I was just like, oh, that was really cool. Yeah. That was fun. I made another one for my room. Um, and then my dad made me make a few for my siblings before I went to college with like some of yeah. their their schoolwork. So I think that's yeah. where like my oh, interest cool. in kids art and yeah. rearranging like and hearing their stories and seeing how, because I don't know, something about kids art and how vibrant and just how like reckless yeah. they can be is so yeah. appealing to me. Yeah, I saw you made covers oh, for journals the journal for your covers. siblings that's yes awesome. that um, was super cool i'm big on again like just sometimes presentation means a lot so like whether it's just mm-hmm. having like uh, a, a necklace or like a bracelet that has like a design i really like it makes me feel comfortable and so i know sometimes some people have a hard time journaling because it was hard for me even to yeah. like journal I always recommend like write stuff down it, yeah. it really helps but when you're not in the habit of doing so like it kind of seems like what's the point like my life is so busy I don't have time to do that yeah. but if you ever do have time to do it and you do write stuff down like I find it's easier when I like how my journal looks yeah oh, so okay. yeah, yeah. If, yeah so I tried to like make the cover something um that I thought each of them would like and then I also cut up oh you I remember I'm sorry it just came back to me. You asked mm-hmm. me about my journal, um, if, if I would ever like use it yeah. and show it. I cut up pieces of like my older journal, journal and like put it in my siblings. Okay. And the ones I gave to them just because I don't see them too often. So I do okay. want them to have like pieces of me or just like yeah. advice. So oh, that's cool. Oh, that's <laughs> and that regard. Yeah. Yeah. I share it with them too. But 
Yeah, that's why right. I did the cover thing. That's cool. Yeah, I, I thought that was wild. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I've got um, I've got a big family. I've got four sisters and two brothers. So that Ooh. that family thing, yeah, that I thought that was great. Yeah, it's beautiful. Be- before I ask you the next question, you took a bus to Disneyland. You used to take. <gasps> <laughs> I had yeah. to ask. That is wild. <laughs> yeah. From Riverside or from LA? From LA. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I okay okay which <laughs> which should I acknowledge first the bus I have to acknowledge Disneyland first but I'm so I it was so much fun it, it was such an adventure honestly yeah. just because like uh, there were so many things I had to do I felt like a little explorer yeah. but again I was an environmental studies major and fun fact I hate driving I just like okay. it really makes me nervous like yeah my dad had to force me to get my license I was in the car shaking like, <laughs> <laughs> like we, had to pull, we had to pull over and he was like just scream let it out just yeah. breathe and I'm like I can't like I uh-huh. I just don't like driving but I have yeah. a car I have my license but if I can't take public transport I yeah. will yeah. like in uh-huh. any situation just because I also love being a passenger and like having my headphones in and listening to music Uh like I just love like pretending I'm in a music video all the time basically (laughs) (laughs) so I I don't mind taking public transport and I was an environmental studies major so I care about like sustainability so I just always say like it's good for the environment yeah yeah Uh uh-huh but uh carpool but um yeah yeah really uh how long was that bus ride that had to oh be my crazy. okay see that i i didn't look too far into the details just because i didn't <laughs> want to discourage myself honestly uh-huh. i kind of hopped on the bus it was like hopefully i get back but um the bus <laughs> ride i want to say like i want to say like an hour 25 oh that's actually not that bad yeah okay see, yeah, see? That's and i'm like for, yeah. and to be a passenger i can get up walk around you know yeah. and the thing yeah. is nobody's busting to disneyland so it wasn't no. that crowded <laughs> oh, that's cool. yeah because you know yeah. what even from la out of when there's a lot of traffic on that five it might take you an hour and 25 yeah to okay and there's air conditioning i'm like yeah. and it's some on the way back i just knocked out like at that point i was so tired i was like oh, yeah, I'm yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> okay no i i had to ask you that i put a star next to that question because i thought that was crazy <laughs> right, yeah. yeah and you know what and the public transportation in la it gets a bad rap because i I used to take the bus everywhere, right? And I, mm-hmm. I had lived downtown for a long time. So I would take the metro or take mm-hmm. like the goal line to Pasadena. You know what I mean? It's yeah. I saw some there was some YouTube video about how bad the public transportation in, in LA is. And I want to say this, people, if you see this and you come to LA, it is not bad. I mean, it beats honest being stuck in traffic, you know. The, the bus would be I far. I I honestly agree. Yeah, like there, there. I've heard some horror stories from people, and to those people, like from what I heard, I probably wouldn't. But me personally, I haven't had like a deeply traumatizing. Like I have had, honestly, I've just taken it so frequently, so often that like yeah. even when you do encounter like creepy people, I just yeah, I'm used to handling them. But for yeah. people who aren't accustomed to it, it's super scary. But <laughs> for me personally, I'm. Yeah. I feel like if I feel safe again, because I also like kind of mm-hmm. I'm aware of what situations I put myself in. So mm-hmm. it depends on the context, but for the most That's part, true. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all bad. I love, I love, especially the metro. I enjoy taking it yeah. and looking out oh, the yeah. windows. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's funny. I, I was a kid when the when the red line opened. So I lived in, I'd say, the Wilshire District, Third Vermont, and so they used to get free rides like for like. A, a couple of weeks when it opened oh it was wow. great i loved it you know because there was never any subway in la when i was a kid so it was a big deal for me i, I absolutely love it used to take the train to universal studios all the time when that, <gasps> when that stop opened oh it was great oh my <laughs> goodness that would be awesome i didn't know it went to universal studios oh yeah yeah right there yeah it's great it's better than you know paying for parking up there yeah if you ever go 100 city walk yeah, take that, take that metro. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Okay. All right. So let's see. I want to talk about one of your pieces. Oh, you know what? I want to talk about the skateboard deck that you uh that you paid. Yeah. Okay. So what gave you the idea for that? Was it just okay, I want to practice on a new medium, or or you just had the idea, hey, I want to paint a skateboard? Literally for just like a year. Like I've just been like, I want to make a, I want to paint a skateboard deck. Just, yeah. I wanted to so desperately. I've always been very drawn to streetwear in general. 
Okay. But I'd never done any type of like street anything. I can't skate. Yeah. I didn't dance. And like I wasn't really dressing street style, but like I had always been so, I don't know, just attracted to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think like as I matured and got older and just got more secure with myself, I recognized like, I don't know, like the way I dance, like I I yeah. <laughs> I appreciate and embrace the style in a lot of ways that I hadn't like recognized earlier on. And so while I cannot skate, um, I just, I, yeah, it's a new medium I was playing with. And then also I'm going to like hang it up on the wall. A lot of my pieces also serve as like vision boards for me, literally. So I don't skate, but I want to get into like street wear, street um, skating, street stuff like that, even shoes. So I think it's kind of just motivation, like, Okay, I did the deck. Now what's next? You know, yeah. okay. whether it's whether it's learning how to use it or getting on my roller skates. My biggest priority: you will most likely see me on roller skates before you see me on a skateboard. I've really? always wanted to be like uh, one of those roller oh, skating yeah, girls yeah. who like do the <laughs> who do the dance things. But I've never. I was always too shy to dance growing up, and then I've uh-huh. always been terrified to fall roller skating. Oh, sure. So I'm working on that. Okay, I'm working right. on that. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> no, that's, I've always, yeah, I've always had a dream of being one of those dancer dudes on roller skates. Yeah, it, it looks super cool. It looks cool. You sure. can. Uh huh. And you know, there's a roller rig not too far from where I live too, so I should just see. Yeah, I should just go. Just do it go. One day. Yeah. One day uh-huh. for fun. Yeah. 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 It looks. It looks real slug too. So that's <laughs> that's cool. Okay, so there's a uh, a picture of you in front of. I guess it's a fashion collage. I think that's what you call it. Uh, oh, okay. On. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So does does fashion play a part in the way you create also? It, is that um, maybe a way to creatively express yourself? Because, I mean, just fashion in general, it's, it, there's a wide aspect of, of styles, you know, and, and the way people wear their clothes. Does fashion maybe inspire the way you create sometimes? 100%. 100%. I think... Mm-hmm the more work I do, the more it becomes fashion inspired, just because it's always been a passion of mine, but it's always been one that I felt like I shouldn't pursue or that I was wrong to pursue in a way. Cause I've always been so like focused on my academics. Yeah. And so uh, I didn't really like think about art or think about any of that until I finished school, so to speak. So now that I'm almost finished with school or in the process of just doing that, I'm recognizing like life is short. And there's, a, I'm seeing a lot of things I like, whether it's just simple patterns and I want to make clothes. I want to do different things with these patterns and organize them in cool, yeah. stylish ways. And so I'm starting to do that through art and doing that through art. Again, as I just mentioned, it's kind of like a vision board. So it influences yeah. me to like do other things, whether it's make my own clothes or make um, anything literally, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, yeah, I've I've ran into a few artists that, like most artists are not one dimensional, you know, they've got their hands and, you know, a couple of different things, I mean, like you, and I think that's, I wouldn't say an easy jump, but it's a logical jump for me to go from art to fashion, you know, eventually, mm-hmm. which is, I, I, and I think you'd be great at it, like your, the vision in some of your pieces, I think, would you know, would really, uh, lend to you know some sort of fashion whatever you decide to do you know it's, it's going to be awesome when you decided okay well maybe you're not just doing the art like and that's it you know you've got a lot of things going on was there any uh pushback from your family or friends that say okay you've been on this path you know with your education and academics for so long why would you stop and do this yes mm-hmm. yes um I think especially with my family with my friends um there were some of them were just confused because when I make a decision sometimes it's kind of so random where it's like I've been on one consistent path and then randomly I'm like actually like I'm doing this now and they're like (laughs) yeah okay um and then when it comes to my family I've recognized one thing I'm working on is just being less sensitive to criticism because I tend to be very passionate about the things I do So when I make a decision, like I'm pouring all my emotions and everything, like I -hmm. feel into it. So then when I tell my family and they give honest criticism because I'm not hearing what I want to hear, and this is something I care so much about, I feel like I can become like a barking, angry, defensive dog. So I think 
with the decision to pursue art this time. Like it was something I was so secure about and something that I'm willing to take my time. It's not anything I'm necessarily rushing into. I want to make sure the pathway that I create is one that's authentic to like the journey I want. But I think they they recognize just from the way I approached it and spoke to them and navigated the situation that this is um, something that I'm secure in. Yeah. And that even though I'm not 100% sure of what the heck I'm doing, like yeah. I'm taking my time with this and it's something I really care about. Yeah. So I think obviously they're just concerned about like, what are you doing? Like, just what's the plan? But yeah. I think they're overall supportive of just okay. me being secure. Yeah. yeah, no, that's good. And I mean, yeah. And like you said, you know, you, you're putting everything into it. And, and, and I think that's a great thing. You, if you make a decision, you've got to be 100% on board with the decision you're making, or it's not going to turn out the way you want it to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even if you, you've got to try, you've got to give it your all. Like I was, I was talking to a friend not too long ago and he was asking <laughs> me about, Oh, how was, you know, the, the YouTube show going? And he was mm-hmm. like, Oh, you know, that's, that's a fun hobby. I was like, yeah. It's not a hobby you know what i mean like, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay maybe like yeah. going to the museum for me like that's a hobby i enjoy you know what i mean but no this is this is something i'm serious about you know i wouldn't be taking all the time to do this buying all this equipment you know reaching out to artists because i mean i've had heartbroken like trying to uh like giving out invites and you know and talk to people and early on i learned okay well everyone's not going to respond to you or and artists are busy, you know, I get it, but like, this is what I want to do. And like you said, I'm super passionate about it. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep going till the wheels fall off. So, so yeah. And it's, and it's, it's been awesome. You know, like I, I really do. I love artists. You know what I mean? And it's, I go to all these shows. I went to a show last night actually, which was, which was super cool. And it's really nice to see, like, it's nice to see the, the community reaction to, an artist who put their all into everything and mm. finally has a show and it, it has like a real nice turnout you know it's there's nothing yeah. better than that for me you know it's awesome to see uh-huh that's so right. sweet yeah. very true yeah. i just went to an art showing as well it was super nice just to be in that space with so many yeah. people who appreciate some of the same things you do or some of the yeah. same styles it's so yeah. interesting to see how you having this one common, liking this one thing, like um, links you in so many other ways. And it's like, yeah. oh, we like this one thing. And we also like these other things and those connected yeah. to that. Yeah. But to tap on, to touch on to what you were saying, just about like pursuing your dreams. I think it's so, one of the biggest things I've learned is that it's easy to like have a dream. And pro- I mean, it's not even easy to have a dream because sometimes like you'll have an idea or a concept but you don't know how to express it so one you have to like organize 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 that's my biggest thing like formulate Mm -hmm. a plan to make it like something you can vocalize Mm -hmm. and then also like convincing yourself because I think you're your biggest and or at least me like I'm my biggest Mm -hmm. enemy like a lot of stuff I've been an artist since before I've been calling myself an artist you know I've been making art but when I made art before I'm like oh this is nothing so sometimes it's like a matter of convincing yourself and unlearning and recognizing there's things you have to unlearn because you're standing in your way so I yeah. think a lot of it comes down to self-awareness and that's one of yeah. the biggest blessings I think I got at my time at UCLA like mm-hmm. working with kids and recognizing how helping them become more self-aware will help mm-hmm. them become like will help them have a more meaningful education because yeah. the more you know like yourself your assets your strengths yeah. then you'll know what material is useful for you, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so you've got, I think it's the piece that's right behind you. I think it's called Love Ball oh. Island. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So this one, this one I love. I absolutely love that piece. Now, what was, okay, so creating this one, because I, I like how you have, like, you you show the, um, like, the process you do, and, and sometimes mm-hmm. you'll post, you know, the not finished product. Now, something like that, it seemed, I don't know if it, if it took a while for you to finish this one, but what was, what was the, uh, the mindset in creating this one? And then finally coming to finish it and being happy with, you know, the whole thing when it was done. Um. With this one, I was mad. Yeah. Not as mad as I 
not as mad as I was with the one before, but like in the initial stages, I was mad. So I think I even had like some curse words written on it before. Yeah. <laughs> like it looked, it looked a little different. Uh-huh. Um, but I was angry, and this one took like this one actually took a while, but I wanted it to take a while because I wanted to take my time and see how my art would look different. So I was more intentional and spent more time. Um, so I did that on purpose, but it. It was fun because it kind of felt like a scavenger hunt Uh because because I knew like I'll give myself more time. I have more time to develop like, hmm, what do I want this to be about? So like with when it came to pieces, I kind of had the story or concept in mind and I'd be out and be like, oh, I can use this for the the whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it helped kind of like frame what I needed to complete it Mm -hmm. over the as the time went on Um, and what inspired it. Just, I think I I had gotten out of a breakup a few months prior, and then the breakup, reflecting on that, and then I had ta- I had taken my leave of mm-hmm. absence, and I hadn't really had time to reflect on my breakup because I'd been so busy with school, and I think having just this time to reflect on the breakup, leaving mm-hmm. school, and what that meant. I was leaving one path and having to yeah. pursue another, and then just a lot of the realizations that came with why I was attracted to this person and how a lot of it, I don't know that it was, it was a lot of it was infatuation and how that infatuation deferred me from a path and created like a warrior, so to speak, and like led to this transformative journey. And so that's what the piece is essentially about. And obviously when I finished it, I felt, it it looked how I felt. Like I felt like proud, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> so I uh-huh. think I was super, super pleased. And I think since, since that piece it gave me a lot of just momentum and energy to make a bunch of a bunch of other pieces I was proud of because when I look at that I not only like reminisce on like the emotion I was feeling but I feel proud that I was able to execute a vision I had in my head so okay I feel good about that one yeah all right so so would you say that that piece was sort of a like the final page to the chapter that that you were getting out of and like that that was it that marked it right there and now on on to my next journey that's how I honestly feel about each of my pieces like when I look at them I have like a a gateway into like a frame of mind I was in for that stage of my life and so for that specific one yeah I have Mm -hmm. it's really cool to be able to look back and like think of that time arranged as wow this how was that time where I did that yeah okay Okay, that brings me to another one of your pieces. What is it? Found at sea. You know which one I'm talking? Oh yeah, this mm-hmm. one, yeah. The yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. So was that one before or after? This uh... one was right after. And the funny thing about okay. this one is this one I did very quickly. This one took okay. months, like months, or I don't, I don't know how long. Maybe one month or two. But this one took mm-hmm. every like, I want to say a week, but probably less than that. And I think. Okay my approach was so much different because this one I hadn't really painted anything I was proud of like recently Mm -hmm. versus this one I had like just done something I was super proud of so I was going off that confidence and was like you know what I know what I'm doing and I Uh I kind of went about it differently I still planned it but I went on procreate this time and like um made a collage like a digital collage and based off like that visual I just painted it on a canvas. And so my approach was so much more organized. And this one kind of helped me realize like, oh, I can like have structure to it. That'll make me go quicker. But I think with this one, I'm still in the process of processing it. I think sometimes like my art can be very just like spontaneous. And I have like a theory. I have a few like theories of what bits and pieces are, but I don't know that I want to share quite yet before. Like I can have like a full... You know, like I want to give you all the full shebang because okay. I'm not right. 100. I'm not 100 for sure what it means yet either. Is okay. that strange? I'm not sure. No, if that's no, 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 no. That's no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, when you're no, when you're ready, we'll do this again. Then, all right. <laughs> all right, yeah. but yeah, but it's no, that, that makes sense. No, I'm just saying no. That that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, well, I'm sorry. What were you saying? I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was gonna say no. You're fine. I was gonna say it's interesting that like how it changes or I become like more conscious of myself the more time I spend with the pieces because sometimes I'll paint a piece and hate it and then 
a lot of times actually most of my pieces I'll I'll have them and finish and be like dang I wasted this time mm-hmm. and then in a few months I'll look over and come to appreciate it but I think sometimes when I'm still in those moments because it's so recent I may still okay. be in that moment and I may not be able to step outside and say oh this is what's going on okay. so I think sometimes it takes time just for me to even know and understand oh unconsciously this is what I was trying to reveal okay so okay yeah yeah so would you say most of your pieces are a reflection of how you're feeling at that time or when you start that piece or is it okay I just have a concept and you know this is what it's going to be there's I think 100% just in my style there's always going to be some element of me expressing how I feel whether it's Mm -hmm. just like me my reflection of like a situation but it's always gonna in some way like root back to a feeling I have because that's just how I relate to the world that's how I feel like we all should relate to the world just like how we feel about things Mm -hmm. um but sometimes like again they can change like I can be really upset Mm -hmm. and do something and then later change my like tone of calm down I'll come back Uh and be like you know what like I acknowledge your anger girl and then I'll put something (laughs) else that like okay I feel better suits so it I don't know. I feel like the paintings changed. And honestly, I don't know that this one's even finished because yeah, I, okay. I feel a little change coming on to it. Maybe yeah. it may not be significant, but sometimes I do decide to add changes over time. They kind of grow okay. with me, which I appreciate yeah. about mine because yeah. I'm not too like, I want to be as, I want to embrace as much change as I can because I feel when I try to like hold on to moments and they leave, I don't know how to recover. So just being okay yeah. with things changing. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Because I mean, change, change is inevitable. You know what I mean? And exactly. I think that that's dope that you can maybe, okay, maybe think one is finished, but okay, maybe I want to change something else about it. That's, that's great. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's how people should approach life too. I mean, sometimes you got to make changes and you might yeah. think something is done or, you know, but you know, things change. You might want to switch it up. Exactly. You know? Yeah. No, that's great. It's this one that says, please don't see. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I love this one. Now, but, and, I, and I was thinking about this one, too, when I saw it. It's like, okay, like someone who puts herself out there, you know, in the way that you do, but maybe somewhere inside, it's, I don't want people to see this, but I do want people to see this. I don't know. Does that make sense to you? That makes so much sense. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Um, growing up, my dad is like a very big force in my life, quite literally. He would always push me to do things. So yeah. I'm in a habit of always being very uncomfortable in situations and finding ways to get through it. And mm-hmm. I think even as an adult, while he's not still doing that, pushing me to that same extent, I do recognize that growth comes with discomfort. Mm-hmm. So I do try to like opt in be vulnerable as often as I can but then I also have this element of like there's again there's always this like force that I feel like I need to be pushed because there's also another part of me that feels small that yeah. feels like they can't do it themselves if that makes sense yeah, so I yeah, think yeah. Uh-huh. there's one version of myself that recognizes that there's a part of me that needs to be pushed and then there's the small part of me that is like okay let's just go and do it Um, and that piece was a that was that's a digital variation of like the the canvas piece we were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. I I think it was I may have a problem and I think I was going to use it I was going to use it to compile a bunch of short stories for my siblings of just like I don't know stories I feel like are relevant for them to hear as kids Mm -hmm. growing up right now um so I put it again also sometimes me posting things is like well since I posted it, I have to do it so me okay. kind of setting myself yeah. up to like push myself so yeah. okay well since this is out on the public eye I can move forward with the the book mm-hmm. of the, the children's stories so. yeah okay I don't know if this is personal or not but you drew or painted it was a picture you said it was your dad's birthday and oh was, yeah oh, okay yeah that one is awesome so you you, you sort of talked about your relationship with your dad yeah. and how he was a big influence on you. Uh, mm-hmm. Does that, does he ever, um, or not him, but 
like in the back of your mind when you're creating, well, you kind of sort of answered that, how you said he was kind of a big push for you, but do mm -hmm. his, like the encouragements that you had as a child, like, are they always in the back of your head thinking, okay, like this is what he would want me to do, or this is how they're I should, the, you know? They're in the back front side, like, <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. I think I respect yeah. and love my father a yeah. lot. Just growing up, I think I was very timid and shy. And I respected and loved him so much. I never gave myself room to really explore. And that's not all on him, so to speak, but just in general. I feel I didn't explore as much as I wanted to in my childhood. And so um, now that I've grown up, I do appreciate his support. Yeah. But I have the confidence to kind of like have more control and what I want to do or an understand yeah. self-awareness I guess of where yeah. I want to go whereas okay. before he had a path which we both agreed this may be a good fit for me and now that I'm older and able to understand what I like and don't like I think mm -hmm. I'm deciding differently yeah. and yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that changes okay. the relationship yeah yeah uh-huh oh, there's one awesome one I think it was oh, let me find it 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 looked like it was a photo and then you collaged over it or painted over it. Mm -hmm. Hold on. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the red and blue. And yeah. The yeah. squatting one, right? Yeah. yeah. That's so how did you know, that come about? That was a very interesting one. I, I, I love the way that one. That's went. that that's so interesting because that's like my favorite thing to do. It kind of reminds me of like when Snapchat first came out, you know, okay. and we would people would just draw in pictures, you know, like yeah. you would take a photo you draw a picture over it and like I would yeah. go crazy with that like I was yeah. I thought that was the coolest thing ever and uh -huh. so I, I don't even know what you would call that or what that's uh -huh. been called um I don't know if it's just digital art or so to yeah. speak but I, I I love doodling so if you give me like a photo and you're like doodle on okay. this I'll like yeah gladly do it I love yeah. doing that <laughs> so I don't really know what that was I was just kind of like freestyle yeah, no. that's like my most natural it reminds uh -huh. me of just like doodling on paper yeah. just drawing on a surface you're not supposed to be drawing on is so yeah. exciting uh -huh. so. no yeah that yeah that one is great that's that's one of my favorite pieces of yours that one wow that one. really thank yeah, you yeah that I was do, like that know. took like 10 minutes probably really i love yeah. the way it looks i don't know there's something <laughs> about it that, that you know it draws me to it it's it's awesome that makes me so happy uh-huh there is a piece that i saw in your social medias and it was sort of a montage of different tv shows you know what i'm talking about Ooh, yeah 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 it was like spongebob the nanny and then Moesha living single yeah. uh -huh. golden girls uh -huh. yeah is there is there any progress with that one because i would love to see the way that one came out really okay i'm getting yeah. like a lot of feedback <laughs> about that one that one it was i was making a mother's day or it was a mother's day it was for my mom for her birthday uh -huh. those are just a bunch of shows we always watch together like yeah. we have these just we watch reruns reruns yeah. of the same shows all the time yeah. um but no i left it unfinished i okay. left it at her house i don't have it with me but when i go back i definitely will finish it because yeah. i'm getting a lot of feedback yeah. about that one which i did not expect at all i was feeling not confident about it really? so i was like yeah i'm just gonna uh, -huh. yeah. uh hold off but yeah, I definitely yeah. will go again. You know, sometimes my process, it takes a very long time for me to complete a piece yeah. sometimes. So mm -hmm. now that I have all this feedback, I'll definitely go back and complete it 100%. Yeah. No, because that, it reminded me, you know, of my childhood because oh, wow. you know, before all of this, like streaming, you know, there's millions of channels you can look at. Like we didn't, well, like when I was really young, we didn't have cable. So it yeah. was just a bunch of reruns on TV. So it would be yeah. me and all of my brothers and sisters watching all these old shows. And that it just reminded me of, you know, a simpler time. Yeah. So I, yeah, <gasps> I had to ask you about that one. I, I love that one. Oh my um, goodness. See, yeah. now I have, that makes me so excited <laughs> to go back home. I'm like, yeah. once this is over, I'm like sprinting home to finish it. I definitely I, will. I can't wait. I have those same feelings when I yeah. think it or drew uh -huh. it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. It's, so that's beauty of art you know something like that could just make you feel so much emotion and just take you back exactly. to a different time yeah, it's great yeah and, and that's, that's how i, I felt honestly, with that mm -hmm. i view it as a time machine so to speak yeah. like how like 
how you can use emotion to take you to a different place, whether that's like yeah. a simpler time. For me, yeah. a lot of times I'm like trying to go back to my childhood. I'm like, take me back. But yeah. <laughs> that's what I that's what I love. So yeah. I, your feedback means so much. Oh well, good. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> my you know my very you know small opinion, but uh, but yeah. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Oh, you kind of talked about this a little bit. I just wanted to ask a little bit more about, so you have digital art that looks mm -hmm. like it's a collage, like you've made collages mm -hmm. like within. Okay. So that's, I thought that was very interesting. Cause I don't know. Right. I'm not sure. I've this ever feels seen like that. a riddle. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Feels like a riddle in my brain. I'm like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Cause I'm doing that, what you said, yeah. but yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh huh. Yeah. Because I at first yeah. I wasn't sure like is this a digital piece or is this a collage mixed with painting I like I couldn't tell but then I, I was like oh this is just a digital piece I that feel you like make I look mix, like because yeah. I feel like I mixed them all like at some point I've painted on digital then printed it out and then cut it and put it on a painting so yeah. I'm like it gets yeah. confusing but <laughs> yeah I think <laughs> I think it, uh, it looks dope to me I love it I think it looks great <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's been it's been great talking to you. This has been a. Uh, it's been so fun talking to you, yeah. and I love your background. It's like oh, grabbing my attention. Like I'm trying oh, to like you. focus my eyes. And, like... <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, this came about because I when I started this, I was like, I I don't know what to put behind me. I have I have no idea. But then I, love I remembered it. I had it's like a, a divider, a screen here, and I thought, oh, okay, mm -hmm. well this this could look cool. It's it's it pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, it's and there's a beauty in simple things sometimes, you know, because I'm I didn't saying want to the look simplicity. Busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it, it uh -huh. really does. Like I'm loving it. I love Thank it you. a lot, and I like how like one side is like blank, yeah. and the other side is like. Whoosh you know thank you yes that's my you know mm -hmm. my tiny artistic uh take on my background so yeah i, I thought it looked cool <laughs> super cool is there any message that you would like to put out into the world before we go we've touched on a lot of things and you've you've, you've given great advice within this conversation so i'm not <laughs> sure if there's much for you to add but um i'd say for i always ask this question for the artists out there that's unsure of themselves or you know Someone who was, it? I think it was the last artist I interviewed for Roz. Mm -hmm. he's, he said something about comparing your art to other people's art instead of, you know, working on yourself and not being focused on what someone else is doing, because yeah. that might trip you up thinking, oh, well, I can't do what this person does, but that's not what you do. You know, it's totally different. So if there's an artist out there that has these feelings, that's maybe thinking, oh, I'm not as good as these other people. What would you have to say to them? Man, I think that was great mm -hmm. advice. You know, like, mm -hmm. Comparison is definitely the thief of joy. And I would advise just doing what you can to like become more self-aware and mm -hmm. thinking of yourself as, I like to think of myself as like a video game character. So okay. figuring out what my strengths and weaknesses are so I can navigate whatever problems come about because the journey will be hard there'll be moments where like you make good stuff but there'll also be moments where you feel like you suck and you're not an yeah. artist so learning yeah. how to cope with those moments and learning like what you need um in times when you maybe need support or you don't have the resources to do and execute your vision just finding like ways to get that so you can build your confidence because I truly think you can do anything you want to do it's just a matter of how much energy are you willing to put into it and how creative are you like willing to be with your strategies so yeah okay all right well that's yeah. beautifully put all right all right so where can the people find you what would you like them to uh see all the awesome stuff you put out in the world um you can find me on instagram and twitter at k dollars k d x l o i all right all right well mm -hmm. thank you so much kennedy this has been an absolute blast. You are a wonderful to talk to. And I'm, I'm glad you agreed to do this. This is uh, quite the honor for me. Yay. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, yeah, no problem. And hopefully we can do this again sometime. Of course. Have a good rest of your day. You too. You too. Take care. All right. You too. Bye.